let's list some of the alternatives. There are no good alternatives to forgiveness. Every alternative is damaging. And this is just a few examples. This is not at all exhaustive, but one alternative is direct vengeance by causing harm. Um, we've already talked some about that. that and, and, you know, the most common form of that is doing back to them what they did to you, though it could be other things. Another cause is, another response is indirect vengeance by withholding love. Um, that, that can be big, you know, withholding big parts of a marriage relationship or something. Or it can be as simple as just refusing to smile at someone because you're still upset at them. And um, that is indirect vengeance. You're, you're choosing to withhold love from them. Uh, there can be indirect vengeance by withholding communication, you know, like giving someone the silent treatment, which is essentially saying, I'm going to make sure you know how hurt and upset I am, and I'm going to make sure it hurts you some. No, no. Again, neither of those things mean that, like we said before, everything's going to be just like normal. <laughs> you know, I, it, it, if someone does serious wrong to you, your communication with them is probably going to be different, <laughs> you know, to some degree. But, but that's different from me withholding, like me saying, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm too upset to you to talk to you. I'm, I'm not going to look at you. I'm not going to smile at you. I'm, um, that is an indirect kind of, of vengeance. There is manipulation by withholding forgiveness, kind of leading somebody along to make sure they have to kind of stay stuck for a little while longer. Uh, I don't think I'm ready to forgive you yet, you know, um, which is usually kind of manipulation. Like, I'm going to see if I can get you to change by not forgiving you yet. There is blackmailing, you know, using their wrong against them to win arguments in the future. Yeah, well, don't forget that. You did this. There is grumbling. You know, well, I forgive you, but I'm going to keep a bad attitude anyways to help you remember what you've done. You see how many of these relate to, I want to make sure you remember what you've done. Who are we supposed to trust remembers what they've done? Who do we entrust that to? You know, that has to be entrusted to God instead of us being the reminder of their wrong. Forgiveness commits to not be the person who always reminds them of their wrong. Remember some of our yeah buts? <laughs> Doesn't mean it can never be talked about again. Doesn't mean there are not people who shouldn't be told any of those things. But I'm not going to be the person who feels the godlike responsibility to make sure you remember what you did. Steve. So, uh, because I have a sinful heart, uh, I can see myself running to uh, this banking analogy. Um, one of the quotes that uh, Keller gave was, but when you forget, that means you Uh -huh. So I can see my sinful heart running to thinking or trying to deceive myself into thinking that by bearing that debt myself, I've somehow now earned the credit hmm. that can be used later hmm. against that person. Yeah. So it's not right to do that, right? Hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's. I've got that's... credit in the bank. Right, right. But it seems like in that situation you don't have forgiveness because you're not, you haven't absorbed the debt yourself, you've just deferred it. Yeah, and make, it, make them pay later. Yeah, that's good. That's right. I, I think maybe part of the Bible, Jesus' words that can challenge us about that are, as we'll see in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, that realization that I'm always on both sides of the coin, I'm always both forgiving and having to be forgiven, you know, and I'm just as much, I'm just as much a debtor as they are in, in, to God ultimately and then to other people too. And it just so much of this becomes a mess when we don't see our own sin. We only see the sin of the person who wronged us. And I think that's what, 
happens when we're stuck with there where you're saying, like, boy, now I've got this to use against you. As if countless other people couldn't use my sins against me, you know, if they wanted to hold them against me. So that's a good point, Steve. It's been yeah, there's consequences to the person who is forgiven that the forgiver knows nothing about. If you've been forgiven, you have a set of consequences that you know of, but the person who forgave you doesn't know. Like in the case of forgiving a debt, judicially, the IRS says forgiving debt is income to you. It has nothing to do with the person who forgave the debt. Yeah. I think that's sometimes we're struggling with, will they get off scot-free? Well, they don't actually, but we don't know hmm. what it is that they're, that they're paying yeah. emotionally. Right, not right. To that. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Good. Chris. Um, earlier, you mentioned a, a quote, and I was wondering if we had it somewhere. Oh, yeah. Forgiveness looks wrong in the eye, and then continues on. I started to say that, and you were wondering if it was in the notes somewhere. Is it in the notes somewhere? Yeah. yeah. What? Oh, we don't have page numbers. Bottom of the first, the main where forgiveness, what forgiveness is section. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. You found it? Is that it? Okay, so if we go back to our list of Damaging alternatives. Uh, the next one is gossip or public humiliation. Telling other people about the wrong was, that was done to you, maybe even intentionally to humiliate the wrongdoer. Um, but then the last thing here, of course, the most common and most damaging response is bitterness and resentment. And you could do a whole seminar on bitterness, um, but we'll just very briefly touch on it here. And I, I appreciate this line from Leon Morris. This is when he was writing about the teaching of Jesus in Matthew 18, and he said, It's easy to skimp on forgiveness, refraining from outward evidence of an unforgiving heart, but nursing up a grudge against one who has offended us. And if you're from a Christian background, you've been in church, um, you know, I think this is maybe especially a temptation to do whatever you need to do outwardly to look like you're forgiving because you know that's what you're supposed to do. But then intentionally in your heart to really hold on tightly to that. And, um, you know, you, I, I think many times you would feel like, I, I'm not going to get vengeance on them. Partly because it's just like, I'm not that stupid, <laughs> you know? I'm not going to get myself in trouble by returning to them what they did to me. But I'm not going to let this go in my heart. And I'm not going to say anything mean to them, and I'm not going to go run around and gossip to everybody about them because I'd get in trouble if I did that. But in my heart, I'm not letting go. And essentially bitterness is what happens when I allow someone else's wrong to poison my heart because I don't truly, truly forgive. You know, we... So someone has called bitterness the wasted emotion. The wasted emotion. It keeps you from seeing your own sin because all you're thinking about is somebody else's. It keeps you from experiencing God's forgiveness yourself because you're not seeing your own sin. It keeps you from seeing God's good purposes in your life, even through the wrongs of others. It wears you out. It tears you down. It depresses you. It breaks up your relationships. It makes you harsh and cynical. It makes you hostile. It affects your health. It never does you any good except the strange comfort we get from nursing our anger at others. It's the wasted emotion. And you don't choose bitterness. You choose unforgiveness, which becomes bitterness or is bitterness. Does that make sense?
So it's very helpful to see that there are no good alternatives to forgiveness. Every alternative is damaging. Yes? I'm not sure if I remember how long I was thinking 15 seconds ago. <laughs> Before I kept well, talking. I, I, no, it's not me. It's my brain. <laughs> um, do you, I, have, I had a couple questions. I'm not sure if I should wait. Do you ever address the, the um, how a person can go about trying to distinguish whether their anger is righteous or selfish anger. That's my first question. You don't have mm -hmm. to answer that right away, but that was just something that came up as mm -hmm. I'm constantly writing questions. Now it's like I need five more seminars. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. Um, They're only 99 95 each. We'll be glad to provide. <laughs> possibility of, I don't know, something that's just going through my mind is, is the possibility of our unwillingness to forgive so that we don't have to look at our own sin. Yeah, definitely. Yep. It's, <sighs> forgiveness is an honesty before God that's hard. It's not, it's like, I think, I don't, I don't know exactly why it's true, but for, when we forgive other people, it feels like we come out of hiding. And that's scary, you know, and I'm not exactly sure how that works, but it's true, you know, that I don't want to forgive them because I might have to then think about what I need forgiven for. And that's hard. So, and on the anger question, I just, I, we spent several weeks on anger recently at church, and I think that audio and video probably is available. And I think I learned a lot that was very, very helpful for me in trying to understand what is the very heart of anger in its good sense. We can't define anger badly. We can't define anger negatively. We have to define anger purely and then figure out how it gets distorted into something wrong. And that whole process of thinking that through, what is God-given good anger that you were given by the Creator? You know, what is that? Was very helpful to then work from that to sinful anger. So I don't know how to summarize that now, but Okay, anybody else? Yes, Bill. Well, I just had a, a observation to say. A lot of things were thrown out, but I was just wondering, like, you know, is is forgiveness genuine without the power of God? Because, and I, I guess you go into the scripture, but you know, work, the world has their definition or idea or picture of what forgiveness is. But then, when we look at scripture, you know, we see what God says about forgiveness. And I just wondered. What your thoughts are on that is, you know, is, yeah. is, is genuine. Is I guess is forgiveness genuine apart from the power of God in the world? Well, I, I guess maybe the bigger question is I think hard, a little hard to answer, but I think the question that relates to is, can a person who has not been born again, changed into a new creature, truly love? <coughs> That's a hard question, but I think that's the real question. Because forgiveness is ultimately love. It's ultimately a choice of love. And so certainly non-Christians can do many things that are related to love, that are connected to love. They can do many things that are selfless, and they can do many things that are connected to forgiveness, that are parts of forgiveness. Um, but at the very, very core of it, can they carry out the kind of love that is true, godly, sacrificial love? You know, probably the answer is no. But that doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of things that non-Christians can do that are related to it, including repair relationships through, for, through practical forgiveness. You know, I think a lot of that is possible. But it's, 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 it's practical and mechanical. It's not rooted in the depths of who God is and what God's done for me. So ultimately, it's different. It's, you know, it's um, I don't know how to, I don't have a great illustration for that, but you just, you don't want to think that unsaved people can't forgive because they can. In many ways, they can do forgiveness things. Good. And that we know for sure. Yeah. Yep. Chris. Yeah, I think it ties into the principle of 1 John, we love because he first loved us. Yeah. And it also uh, ties into the principle that a lot of things that I tend to think in myself 
as good and loving is really selfishness in disguise. Yeah, we do the mechanical ourselves plenty. <laughs> Give so that we can get, forgive so that we can get, love so that we can get. Yeah, we do, we do plenty of that. Mm -hmm.